morning everyone and welcome to our worship from St Hilda's Rectory. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. On Thursday this week we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension with a service in St Hilda's Church. The Ascension marks the moment that the risen Jesus disappears from sight and retakes the place he once held at the right hand of God. Although his disciples can no longer see him, his prayer is that they will still be intimately connected with him and through their connection with him, bound to one another through love. As we all know, Christians come in many shapes and colours we worship, pray and promote our faith in a wide variety of ways. But underlying all of those differences, we hold something in common. And that is our belief that Jesus was the Son of God and that his Spirit is with us and guides us. We are brothers and sisters in this faith and united with each other through Jesus our Saviour. As we worship together today, let's pray that the worldwide church will be united in its witness to Christ our King. Our first hymn this morning is Crown Him with Many Crowns.
Let's light the candle for today's service. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a no light, light no, no darkness, darkness can quench. quench. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, open all desires, desires known, and, and from, from whom, whom no secrets, secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our Guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for the Sunday after Ascension. Risen, ascended Lord, as we tri rejoice at your triumph, Fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The reading comes from John, chapter 17, verses 20 to the end. I pray for these followers, but I am also praying for all those who will believe in me because of their teaching. Father, I pray that they can be one, as you are one in me and I in you. I pray that they can also be one in us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. I have given these people the glory that you have given me, so that they can be one, just as you and I are one. I will be in them and you will be in me so that they will be completed one, completely one. Then the world will know that you sent me and that you love them just as much as you love me. Father, I want these people that you gave me to be with me where I am. I want them to see my glory, which you gave me because you loved me before the world was made. Father, you are the one who is good. The world does not know you, but I know you, and these people know you, sent me. I showed them what you are like, and I will show them again. Then they will have the same love that you have for me, and I will live in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello everyone. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as any manner of thy friends, or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Our Gospel reading this week is concerned with unity and I've started off with a poem by the 17th century poet John Donne, which I think are wise words. They contain an idea that is becoming increasingly distant in our modern society. Not just in Christian terms, but in social, moral and ethical terms too. This poem, 
and more importantly for us, the prayer we've just heard in our Gospel reading, leads us to think about unity. About what it means to be one with God in Christ and with our brothers and sisters around the world. Those who share our faith and those who don't. The way that I see it is that there are two kinds or levels of unity that we might consider. The first one, we need do nothing about it other than to accept it. That's easy to say, but to say it needs an understanding about just what the nature of this unity is. How can we possibly be one when there are so many of us? Certainly we aren't all the same. We don't look the same or act the same. There are all kinds of people who feel drawn, for whatever reason, to this place. Think of the congregation we see gather throughout the month, and we'll find men, women, boys, girls, young and old, those new to the faith, and those who are lifelong Christians. Different backgrounds, different hopes and dreams, different beliefs. We certainly aren't all the same, and that's good news. What does St Paul tell us? A variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. A variety of services, but the same Lord. He asks, what if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body? That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? In short, we wouldn't really want to all be the same, because we all bring something different but equally valuable to the whole. Perhaps then our unity can be found in our common attitudes about the issues facing the church. But the church is seldom of a single mind about anything. Today we see divisions over areas like human sexuality and the ordination of women. In the past, there were divisions over other areas, such as slavery, war and religious practices. It would not be unfair to say that our unity is not in our common attitudes on issues facing the church. Well, perhaps our unity consists in our belief about God. And yet we, as the Anglican Church in this country, embrace a wide range of beliefs about things like communion and creation. We exist in diversity, where others' views are, at least in theory, respected, even if they are disagreed with. So our unity is not in our common beliefs about God. But if the basis of our, of our unity is not that we are all the same, or that we have the same beliefs about the world or about God, then what might it be? Well, if we look carefully at the Gospel reading for today, we'll see that it isn't important who we are so much as whose we are. The source of our unity isn't anything about us. The source of our unity is God in Christ, who has called us to be one, to be united in his name and under his love and grace. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they might be one. We are drawn together by our baptism, we are held together by the Eucharist, and in eternity we remain together in the communion of saints, those throughout the centuries whom Christ has called. We are part of the family of God, not because we are all the same, or because we have the same attitudes, or because we have the same grasp of the mysteries of God, but rather because Christ chose us, and that is genuinely life-changing. But why is it important? It is important because we can give thanks that unity does not require uniformity. It is important because it allows us to cherish our differences, because our similarities are not what holds us together. We can admit our confusions and disagreements because our agreement isn't what holds us together. We can forgive one another because nothing we do is as important or as powerful as that which holds us together. What holds us together is that Christ chose us to be his own, to be his body and to carry on his mission. 
This unity is a gift from God. We are all made in God's image and are unconditionally loved, no matter who we are, where we live or what we believe. The German pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer put it like this. Christian unity is not an ideal which we must realise. It is rather a reality created by God in Christ in which people may participate. But does this mean that nothing can pull us apart? Unfortunately, it doesn't mean that, in spite of the unity that is offered to us through Jesus' prayer. As a church and as a community, we know we face lots of issues that have the potential to divide and separate, including those I mentioned earlier. But at a time when those of faith are being increasingly marginalised, we should be very careful about the things we allow to divide us. Many of the things that are causes of disagreement seem quite petty at times, but we shouldn't underestimate their power to have a negative impact on our shared mission. Of course, this doesn't mean that there shouldn't be debate and differences of opinion, because our diversity means that we have much to learn from each other's point of view. However, it does mean that we need to be less precious about getting our own way and more open to God's will at the expense of our own. What it also means is that because we are united by Christ, we cannot just walk away from one another. As I said a couple of weeks ago, we are bound together by the command to love others as Jesus loves us. Because we are chosen by Christ, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes brothers and sisters disagree. But in the end, we disagree as children of the same Heavenly Father. And that is the strong bond. That is the deep love which unites us. As well as praying for his disciples, Jesus also prayed for those that would come to believe through their word. All this time later, and the astonishing thing is that he is referring to us. If it were not for the fact that the apostles initially spread the word and those who heard it passed it on to others throughout the centuries, we wouldn't be watching this and I wouldn't be talking to you today. Tom Wright, the former Bishop of Durham, says that the church is only ever one genera generation away from extinction. All it would take is for us not to bother and it all ends. That's never happened because people have always told other people and more importantly those people have believed and the cycle has continued. That is unity in practice. One body of people stretched over many centuries and all over the world united in making sure that one faith stays alive and that is where the second level of unity that I mentioned earlier comes in. To make this happen, of course, needs action through mission and evangelism. But first, it needs prayer. John Bunyan, who wrote The Pilgrim's Progress, once said, You can do more than pray after you've prayed, but you cannot do more than pray until you've prayed. Prayer has to be the beginning of our work towards unity. Prayer is at the heart of love, as Jesus showed us in our Gospel for today. He was moved, because of his love for his disciples and for his church, to pray that we all might be one in him. Our mission in this generation is to ensure that we don't use our differences as an excuse not to try and heal the divisions and bridge the gaps that exist. We must pray for each other, all Christians of all denominations, that we might work together, spreading the good news of God's love, so that, in the words of Jesus, the world might believe. In a week which has given us a focus on the work of Christian aid and on the formation of a new parochial church council, in your prayers this week, I invite you to give thanks and pray for those who help the helpless in the name of love, those who have committed themselves for the coming year to developing God's kingdom in this community. 
pray that they and we might all be one. Of one voice in our prayers, of one heart in our love, and of one mind in our service of Christ. Amen. The response to Lord in thy mercy is hear our prayer. Almighty God, may our prayers ascend to you just as Jesus Christ, your Son, was taken up to heaven. As we celebrate the ascension of our Lord Jesus, let it inspire in us feelings of joy and hope rather than fear and separation as we await the coming of the Holy Spirit. We know your Holy Spirit will strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Unifying God, Jesus prayed to you, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, may they also be one in us. Jesus is praying for us, the community of faith at large. We pray that those who follow him will be drawn into the life of the Holy Trinity. We pray that the same unity as exists between the Father and the Son will bind us together. We pray that our community is one united in love, despite occasional conflicts and misunderstandings. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Celebrant God, we pray for all who lead the church, bishops Paul and Sarah, our priests Verity and Steve, and all who support them. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Teacher God, help us to be a good disciple for your kingdom and give us the grace to be a disciple for others. Help us to advance your kingdom every day. Lord, reveal to us our weaknesses and give us the strength to grow in these areas so that we are a better example to those that we disciple. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our troubled world, its peoples and their leaders. We pray for those caught up in war and violence and hatred especially the innocent victims of these evils. We continue to pray for the Ukraine. May peace abound and righteousness flourish, that we may vanquish injustice and wrong, and that suffering won't last forever. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, this week, 18-year-old Salvador Ramos fatally shot 19 students and two teachers and wounded 17 others at Robb Elementary School in Texas. We cannot begin to understand his thoughts and reasonings, but our hearts go out to those who now are suffering tremendous grief at the loss of loved ones. We ask that your love will surround them, maintain their faith, knowing that those who have gone are secure in your loving arms. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those in need, for those who are filled with guilt, who are broken hearted, who are confused and afraid or saddened because a relationship has broken down. We pray for all suffering from those suffering from illness, particularly those requesting our prayers, and give joyful thanks for those on the road to recovery. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all the people that we encounter in our daily lives, especially through the internet and social media in these difficult times. Help us to recognise Christ in one another, however stressed and tired we may be. We ask that you help us to recognise the risen Christ in the face of someone we meet today and give us an opportunity to brighten their day 
with a smile or a word. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all who have died, especially those who encouraged us in our faith by their example. Today we pray for Anita, sadly missed by those in church, and for Jenny Wallace. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. If you are doing something to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee this coming week, I hope it all goes well and that you have a lovely time. Um, I don't know of anybody's birthday this week, but if it happens to be yours, I hope you have a lovely day. Let's ask for God's blessing on us all. Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Our final hymn is Jesus shall reign.